The January 10th, 2022 Minneapolis City Council organizational meeting will now begin. Good morning. My name is Casey Carl and I have the privilege of serving as the city clerk of the city of Minneapolis. Pursuant to Section 4.3C of the Minneapolis City Charter and in accordance with relevant provisions of the laws of the state of Minnesota, this is the day fixed for the assembling of the newly installed members of the City Council following the 2021 general municipal election, marking the beginning of the 2022-2023 term, all as certified by the Municipal Canvassing Board at its meeting on Friday, November 12, 2021. All members subscribe to their oaths of office on Monday, January 3, 2022, as required under Section 8.2 D2 of the Charter and relevant state law. And now, as provided in Council Rule 2, Section 1A, I will convene this organizational meeting of the Minneapolis City Council. The clerk will call the role of members to provide evidence of attendance. Councilmember Payne. Present. Wansley Warlaba. Present. Rainville. Present. Vita. Present. Ellison. Here. Osman. Here. Goodman. Present. Jenkins. Present. Chavez. Presente. Shaktai. Present. Kaski. Present. Johnson. Present. Paul Masano. Present. There are 13 members present. The record will reflect that a quorum is present. Before proceeding, I will note that this meeting is conducted in accordance with health and safety protocols recommended by the city's health department due to the local public health emergency that has been in place in response to COVID. We are observing precautions recommended by the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as the Minnesota Department of Health to reduce the potential risk of exposure or virus spread. The city is live streaming this meeting to assure simultaneously public access to these proceedings. The recording of that live stream will be posted to the city's website and its YouTube channel for future on-demand access as a means of increasing public access and transparency. Council members, this meeting is for the purpose of organizing the body for the conduct of business in the coming two year term. This meeting is convened pursuant to notice as required by law. That notice was included in the transition calendar adopted December 10, 2021, and which was posted to the city's website. That action satisfies notice required pursuant to council rules and the Minnesota open meeting law. Matters to be transacted as part of this organizational meeting are listed on the agenda, a copy of which was first posted and made available to the public on Monday, January 3, 2022. Copies of the agenda have been distributed to all members and have also been posted for public access via the city's legislative information management system at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. Members, there are a few items that were submitted too late to be included in the published agenda. Those items have been circulated to the council members last week. A draft resolution has been shared this morning. Accordingly, I am asking for a motion to adopt the agenda, which would include as part of an addendum, a draft resolution related to the existing local public health emergency, as well as three regulations promulgated last week by Mayor Fry related to that emergency. Also, an item from the mayor nominating a new public works director to be referred to committee. Those items would be added at the conclusion of planned business on the agenda as agenda items under new business numbered six and seven to be addressed after all other items on the agenda have been disposed. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda with those additions, please? Council Member Shugtai. Or Council Member Wansley Warlaba, you're in queue. Is this a mo is this a motion to approve the agenda with the additions? Yes, this is a motion for that and also to get on queue for um, item 1.1. I'll remind all council members when I open the floor, you'll then be able to add your name. We won't, uh, so I'll clear the queue. Right now I need a motion to approve the agenda. I have one from Council Member Wansley Warlaba. I need a second, please. Second. second. I'll take the second from Council Member Shugtai. And I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Rainville. Aye. Vita. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. 
Aye. Chavez. Aye. Shuktai. Aye. Kasky. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. There are 13 ayes and no nays. That motion passes. The ayes have it. And the agenda is adopted. And now, council members, the first item of business is the election of members for uh, this body's officers as set forth in Council Rule 2, Section 1A. The officers of council include president, vice president, and clerk. We will begin with the election of president. In terms of procedure, I intend to administer the election for both president and vice president. We will follow the same procedure for both offices. That procedure will be as follows. First, I will open the floor to nominations. After all nominations have been made, the nominating period will be closed. Once the nomination period is closed, no further nominations will be accepted. Second, after the nominations period is closed, we will proceed to take the vote by roll call. There will be a separate vote on each nominee. We will consider and act on each nominee in the order it was received. Voting will be done by roll call and the clerk will call the roll in numerical order by wards. Third, the nominee who receives the majority vote will be declared the winner of the election. We will follow the same procedure as I said for the election of president and for the election of vice president. Are there any questions now about the election process that I've outlined? There are no questions, so we will move forward now to the process of election of president of city council. And without objection, the floor is now open to nominations to the office of president. Are there any nominations? I think I see council member Wansley Warlaba in queue. Yes, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, I would like to nominate council member Andrea Jenkins for president and council member Elliot Payne for vice president. Council member Wansley Warbler, but we are taking a nomination for office of president only. So I will separate your nomination and say that council member Wansley Warlaba has nominated council member Andrea Jenkins, representative of the eighth ward to the office of president. Are there other nominations to the office of president? Uh, council member Shugtai is in queue. Mr. Clark, I'm in queue to speak to the next item on the agenda. OK, I'm going to clear that out. Uh, we're taking will I be in queue first, time. just to clarify? Uh, you'll, will need I... to, you'll need to put yourself back in queue when that item is opened up, taking one item at a time. Right Got now it. we're on uh, nominations for Office of President. Council Member Chavez, you're in queue. Got it, thank you. Council Member Chavez. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I was also on queue for the VP nomination, but I would like to second the motion of uh, Councilwoman Robin Wanzi Warlaba. Thank you, Council Member Chavez. There is a second. Council Member, so I'm clearing out the queue. I think uh, Council Member, I have everyone recognized. So are there any further nominations to the Office of President? Also, I do want to highlight, uh, Casey, that Jeremiah seems to be having some issues with the chat. So I don't know if IT has been in touch with uh, Council Member Ellison. I have not heard of such things, Council Member Wansley Warlaba, but I appreciate letting them know and the technical team heard that. So they'll reach out to Council Member Ellison. I'll ask one more time if there are other nominations to the Office of Council President. Then before we proceed to a vote, I'll open the floor to just general conversation or discussion. Are there any comments from members on the nomination of Council Member Jenkins, representative from the 8th Ward, to the Office of President? Council Member Payne. Yeah, I just want to say I'm honored to support the nomination of Council Member Jenkins as our next council president. Her thoughtful guidance, creativity, and years of trailblazing are going to inform how our government functions going forward under this new structure. And I'm hopeful we can advance a unified progressive agenda for Minneapolis together. Thank you, 
Thank you, Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to quickly express my excitement about this nomination. I've had an opportunity uh, on the last term on the last council as majority leader to work very closely with uh, then Vice President Jenkins, and she's just a pleasure to work with, and I really appreciate her leadership and uh, know that she will do fantastic in the role. Thank you, Council Member Vita. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I too just wanted to say that I am so excited about um, supporting Council Member Jenkins today. We have uh, over a 12 year relationship. We've done some amazing work in public health and also on the park board, during my term on the park board and her serving as a council member. I'm super excited to support her today and looking forward to working with uh, Council Member Jenkins in the future as the president of the Minneapolis City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Vita. I know that Council Member Ellison has joined via phone as we're having some technical challenges. Council Member Ellison, did you have comments on the nomination of Council Member Jenkins to the Office of Council President? Council Member Ellison? Uh, sorry, I I, uh, I got booted from Teams and so I just, just called back in. Can you all hear me? We can hear you, Council Member. If you have comments about the nomination of Andrea Jenkins, Council Member from Ward 8 to the Office of President. Um, you know, I'm happy to be supporting uh, Andrea Jenkins uh, and this nomination. I uh, just was worried about getting booted from the meeting, but thank you and I'm back. Thank you, Council Member. I'll recognize Council Member Michael Rainville. Council Member Rainville. Did, can you hear me, Casey? I'm sorry. I can hear you. You're, you're back on mute, Council Member Rainville. Okay. There Thank you. you Thank you. Uh, Andrea, I will be voting for you, and uh, I just look forward to working with you, and I wish you the best of luck, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Osmond. Yes, I do want to congratulate um, Andrew Jenkins. Uh, it's, it's been an honor working with you with short time and I look forward to uh, your experience, uh, your leadership, and really excited to be uh, that you, you will be the council president uh, in the next coming years. And also I'm all excited for everyone, everyone new that's joined us on the council. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Council member Shabtai. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to congratulate Council Member Jenkins on being nominated to this office. I know we're in a really exciting moment as a city right now and working on the issues that are most impacting Minneapolis residents, starting with the issue of rent control. I know that's something that she's really excited to work on and partner with with Minneapolis residents and Minneapolis leaders and in, in making that happen. And of course, it would be last for me to not, to, you know, not mention this historic moment that we're in with the people of color majority on this city council um, and wanting to just make sure that 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 um, that's reflected in our leadership. I'm really excited to be supporting Council Member Jenkins today. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Chavez. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I'm just honored to support Council Vice President Andrea Jenkins. I think we're in a moment where we elected the majority people of color in the history of the Minneapolis City Council, and I'm excited to lead besides that leadership and excited to show my support for Council Member Jenkins. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Clark. Um, I'm also excited to support uh, Council Vice President um, Andrea Jenkins for uh, the presidential uh, seats of our council. Um, I'm really more so excited to collaborate with you as well as all of our council members on some key issues that's facing our city, like a strong 3% rent control policy, making sure we're prioritizing um, public safety measures, as Mayor Fry highlighted today, that are not just, you know, police. Uh, focused and, and we're going beyond that and also on a number of issues that I know 
impacts black and brown and immigrant constituents that we all um, care about in this city. So excited to dig into some very inspiring, empowering, and, and we know at times messy work. So thank you. Thank you, council member. I'll ask if there are any further comments. I believe everyone's had a chance to offer their comments. Are there any further comments on the nomination of Andrea Jenkins, council member representing the 8th Ward to the Office of Council President? If not, I will close the period for nominations to the Office of Period of uh, Council President. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on that motion. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Greenville. Aye. Vita. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Shaktai. Aye. Kasky. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. There are 13 ayes and no nays. That motion carries and Council Member Jenkins has been elected president. Council members, we will now open the floor to nominations for the office of vice president. Are there any nominations for the office of vice president? I see Council Member Ellison in queue. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, man, it's so difficult to participate from uh, from my phone, but um, I am happy to uh, nominate Councilmember Elliot Payne uh, to the office of Vice President. Um, I think Councilmember Payne is a, a tremendous leader, um, a fighter for social justice, and uh, I believe he would serve well as a Vice President. Thank you. Councilmember Ellison has nominated Councilmember Elliot Payne representing the first ward for the office of Vice President. Next in QIC, Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Uh, yes, thank you. Oh, my camera there. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, I also would like to second uh, Councilmember Ellison's uh, motion to nominate Elliot Payne. Um, I'm super excited about this. I've worked with Elliot um, already, you know, during our time since being elected on creating collaborative ways to advance uh, strong rent control um, efforts for this council. Um, I know he brings a array of just expertise um, when it comes to public safety alternative solutions, having you know played an instrumental role in creating um, the mental health responders team, which has been so widely received across our city in a time where we're looking for robust and innovative solutions to our public safety um, crises. Um, so I'm so excited to support Elliot and knowing that he's going to drive leadership that's going to address um, with all of us and unite all of us around some key issues um, that's impacting our city, such as housing and, and public safety. So I'm, I'm looking forward to supporting him um, as our next uh, council vice president. Thank you, council member. Uh, we are taking nominations at this point. So with that, I will call on council member Goodman who's in queue, I think, for a nomination. Thank you, Mr. Carl. I also thought we were just doing nominations and I am happy to nominate one of the hardest working members of the City Council over the past eight years and someone who has proven their commitment to leadership in Council Member Lene Palmasano. Thank you, Council Member Goodman has nominated Lene Palmasano, Council Member representing the 13th Ward for the Office of Vice President. Are there further nominations to the Office of Vice President? Are there any further nominations to the Office of Vice President of the City Council? Seeing no one in queue and not hearing anyone rise into the occasion, I will close the nominating period for the Office of Vice President before we proceed to a vote. I will open the floor to general discussion. Are there any comments from members on the nominations? We will begin with the nomination for Council Member Payne, representing Ward 1. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. 
Yes, um, I just want to re reiterate some earlier statements uh, about my support behind uh, Council Member Payne. Um, we are in a historic moment as the first council elected after George Floyd and the historic uprising that took place in 2020. Um, we also have the opportunity as you know, the council that has the, the largest POC majority um, to really have leadership in, in this moment that reflects the diversity of our city and reflects the commitment to the issues that's facing our most diverse communities and working class people. Um, and I know that's been Elliot. Elliot is committed to making sure that all of our residents are guaranteed housing um, and has made the bold move to stand for a 3% rent control policy. He's been deeply invested in looking at how we can create more just solutions when it comes towards uh, public safety um, as his work as a staffer. So even creating this president before he even stepped foot into office. And that is the type of leadership that we need in such a monumental moment right now on um, that diverse, innovative, thoughtful, um, and, and people-led um, commitment to solutions that's really going to address our city's long-standing inequities. So I'm really excited again to throw my support behind Council, uh, Council Member Payne. Thank you, Council Member. Next in queue is Council Member Shuntai. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I am excited to see Council Member Payne nominated to the Office of Council Vice President. Um, you know, I would agree. I think we are in an incredibly historic moment. And when I was speaking to this for, for uh, Council President Jenkins, you know, we we have a, a, a an overwhelming majority now of, of people of color on our city council, and I think it would be incredibly historic to see that represented in um, our council's leadership. And we're in a moment right now where we have um, seven members of this council, a majority of this council that are new like me and you know, learning how to, um, how to lead in this moment. And I think it really matters uh, that we continue in the tradition that we have on this council of, of bringing in first time council members into leadership and, and elect council um, Vice President or elect um, Council Member Payne as our next Vice President. You know, I I, I represent Ward 10, which is a 80% renter community. We are made up of workers. We're made up of renters. We are made up of um, people who depend on um, transit to get from place to place. And I think it really matters to have someone who has shown a, a commitment to those issues um, and prioritizing those issues in in leadership. Um, and then, you know, um, I'm just I'm I'm really excited to be working with with our, our new team and and getting um, a three percent rent control passed and, and get some important work on public safety and workers' rights done in these next uh, couple of years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Ellison, I see you next in queue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, just wanted to give a few comments um, first. I just want to say that, um, you know, Elliot is somebody who worked um, in City Hall. He's a former staffer in City Hall. And I think that um, that perspective means that he comes in with a, you, you, with a unique set of experiences that are going to serve him well. Um, and maybe not as a, a you know, traditional first time council member as I was. Uh, he comes in with a little bit of knowledge. And, uh, and I think that we will all be served by that knowledge. Um, Elliot um, is somebody who uh, is representing Ward 1, which is on the north side of the city. And I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of potential for the north side of the city to become a little bit more united uh, under Elliot's leadership. I think often people kind of think of, you know, you've got the south side, you've got the north side, and then there's northeast, right? Uh, distinct uh, from North Minneapolis, maybe for, um, for, for reasons that we all don't want to acknowledge. And I, I think that under Elliot, um, Ward 1's uh, diversity, Ward 4 and 5's diversity um, is, is going to be um, really accentuated. Uh, obviously, we share a lot of policy um, uh, similarities, and I'm super uh, excited to work on issues of economic justice, uh, issues of rental protections and rent control uh, to close the home ownership gap. Uh, that we have between black homeowners and immigrant homeowners and and white homeowners in our city um and so i'm excited to support to support elliot's um nomination and uh you know uh, last term i was i was 
somehow frequently mistaken for uh, Councilmember Cunningham, we had to we had to deal with that. And so the only thing that maybe I would lament about um, Council uh, Councilmember Payne's um, uh, term is that is that I think that we're we're uh, we're we're in for uh, being mistaken for one another quite a bit. Uh, other than that, I'm very excited to to support uh, Elliot Payne, um, and I hope that my colleagues will join me in uh, uh, in voting for him for Council Vice President. Thank you, Council Member Ellison. Council Member Chavez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. So I just want to say that I got elected by the people of the ninth ward, so I could always bring their voices to the House of Power, because for too long our voices have not been heard. They've been diminished and left behind, and I have an obligation to my constituents to deliver on the priorities that no longer make us invisible. Councilmember Payne reached out to me about the priorities of the ninth ward and how he would lead this council in this critical time in our city, which means addressing and making sure that we have gun violence prevention, censoring racial justice, immigration justice, and rebuilding our cultural district, especially here in the ninth ward. He committed to me that he will prioritize and censor the most diverse ward in the city of Minneapolis and making sure that the ninth ward is no longer being left behind in our city government. To me, it matters who we elect in leadership when we have a historical moment where we elected the most people of color in the city of Minneapolis for the city council in history. And it matters to me that the people that represent me look like me. And now the people that I represent can see themselves in the city council and in our leadership. I'm proud to support Councilmember Payne for vice president. Thank you, Councilmember Chavez. Are there any other comments on the nomination of Councilmember Elliot Payne, Representative Ward 1 for the Office of Vice President? If not, I will now accept any comments on the nomination of Councilmember Lene Palmasano from the 13th Ward to the Office of Vice President. Councilmember Vita. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, I am excited to um, vote for Councilmember Palmasano as vice president. Again, I have a long history, eight or nine years now. I've known Councilmember Palmasano, met her as a, a person who was working on public health policy down at City Hall. I, I just have great memories of Councilmember Palmasano making um, the days that our youth from North Minneapolis were at City Hall, just extremely magical, taking time out of her day to show them around, to speak to them directly, to hear their voices. I appreciated that so much because so many of those young people had never had any of those experiences. And um, a little more history, I, you know, I recently served on the park board and Councilmember Palmasano and I got to know each other a lot better when we worked on the biennial budget. Um, from the park board level, she didn't really have to engage me as the chair of administration and finance on the park board. She could have went ahead and done it on her own at the city, but instead she decided that she would engage the park board. And what an amazing engagement it was. She taught me so much about the city budget. I knew about the park board budget. She was so patient with me and took so much time with me and connected me to at the city so that I could learn more. She was super passionate about that budget. I can't recall another person who talked about a budget so passionately, who was so engaged, who went line by line with me, no matter what time of day I had a question, she answered the questions for me. And then after I won the election, Councilmember Palmasano was the first person to come to me and say, hey, what are you interested in? What is the people in War 4 uh, want? What are you hearing at the doors? What do people want to know uh, about City Hall? How can I help you? How can I support you in this work? That is exactly when you need what you need when you're newly elected. I'm supporting Councilmember Palmasano because not only does she represent her ward, she's open to the idea of listening and learning from others in my ward as well. And I've physically seen her in my ward working and talking to people. And that means a great deal to me as the new elected council member. So again, I'm supporting council member Palmasano because I've seen her build those bridges. I've had those conversations with her about how we can all do better. Thank you. Thank you, council member Vita. Are there other council members to comment on the nomination of council member Palmasano to the office of vice president, council member Johnson? Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
You know, when we're having conversations as colleagues about uh, these leadership positions, um, you know, I think it's important to be able to share some of that context for the public uh, that we talk individually about. For me, one of the really key critical components of uh, these roles is somebody that has deep experience up on the third floor that has that knowledge, not just from working at City Hall, but working within council offices to be able to handle really the Byzantine business that comes uh, through leadership. And I know that firsthand, having uh, served as the majority leader, and now what seems kind of remarkable that uh, being one of the senior most uh, council members on the council, I think only council member Goodman has been around uh, longer. And so, you know, it's, it is really important to me that somebody in that role has that uh, deep knowledge uh, on day one in order to handle all the work that comes through. Uh, I think if we look at now Council President Jenkins, she served for a very significant amount of time, many years in the council offices, and not just serving in the council offices, but for council leadership as well, and I believe was prepared uh, for the role of vice president last term. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, if if you are looking at this body, and first off, let's put it in context. This is one of the leftmost bodies in the entire nation in terms of a municipal government, and 99% of the issues uh, or uh, actions this council takes, we do so unanimously. So there's only a handful of times where uh, we tend to have divided votes on this council. And usually they're over uh, controversial or really big issues. And, you know, on most of those, I have probably voted the other way than Council Member Paul Masano. Uh, but to me, this choice about vice president is not about an agenda or about the issues. It is about doing that very detailed, frankly mundane work in business. And I hope people can see that that work in that business because the city has so much under its purview, it actually opens it up for the rest of the council and council members to move forward progressive policy. And I've seen council member Pomisano do that work through chairing the enterprise committee, through chairing the budget committee, making sure that important things nonetheless, uh, even if they aren't uh, big attention getting issues, get taken care of, even though they're not controversial. That is really important work. She works very, uh, hard in that, and I think that uh, because of that, and really considering all the factors, that she will do a good job as vice president, and that's why I support her uh, in this role and appreciate uh, her willing to step up in this moment. And then, you know, as we have had individual conversations with those interested in serving in this role, I really want to say I appreciate her support on, uh, or appreciate her focus on supporting the city council. And I know that's not always easy when we talk about those issues we disagree on. And I have seen her work in a professional manner as budget chair, for instance, working to keep that neutrality to make sure that the processes and the procedures are fair for all council members, even at times where she significantly disagrees with the direction or, or an outcome. I also want to say that I do really appreciate my colleague, Elliot Payne. I'm excited about the issues that he is excited about and looking forward to working uh, with the, with him on those everything from racial justice, transformational change in public safety, climate change, affordable housing, helping those that are homeless, and all the other issues uh, that are before us in this really critical moment. And it's through our committees, through uh, the work at committees, that we are able to move that work forward, uh, those agendas forward, and I'm looking forward to his partnership on that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. I see Council Member Payne in queue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk, and thank you, Councilmember Johnson, for those words. I just wanted to uh, echo some of the some of the words that Mayor Fry shared in his speech this morning. Um, the time for politics is over, and the time for doing the work is now beginning. And this is going to be really hard work that we are going to be moving ahead with. This is a very pivotal pivotal moment in our city. Um, we have a lot of unresolved. Um, trauma, a lot of unresol unresolved tensions in our city, and I just been really excited about 
no matter how the vote works out, that we've engaged in this deeply, that we leaned into these challenges, and we all rose to this moment to really lead for our city. And I just really appreciate the opportunity to be before this body for such a such a monumental vote. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Jenkins. Good morning, Mr. Carl. And um, you know, before I get started with Marty Marks, I, I do want to just really um, express my deep, deep um, gratitude. Um, I am I'm so humbled to um, have the the support of my colleagues um, to stand in a leadership role on this council. Um, you know, I, I I really think that um, this election was, and, and many of you have spoken to the issues that are facing our community. Um, and one of the, the issues is the deep divided nature of our city at this moment. And I really think that we as a council have an opportunity to help our community come together, to heal, to understand each other, to really uh, stand in solidarity um, and allyship with each other. And I believe that having Councilmember Palmasano as the, the vice president would demonstrate that kind of um, collaborativeness, that working together, that, that allyship, that we are all in this ship together, that we all only succeed when we are all at the table. And so consequently, I will be supporting um, Councilmember Palmasano in her bid for um, the council vice president. I, I, I really, um, I think I have absolutely congratulated everybody who I have encountered that stands up to run for public office. Um, it is an awesome um, and thankless responsibility many times. And I, so deeply appreciate um, Councilmember um, Payne's um, interest and willingness to serve in this role, as well as Councilmember Palmasano. And um, I know from our last term working together um, and the previous four years as a policy aide, her um, attention to detail, her work ethic, um, we would arrive at the office together and leave at the same time, usually around 7 p.m. or later, headed out to a community meeting. And so Councilmember Palmasano is a hard worker um really has uh, a strong understanding of the city budget city processes um and council processes and i think in this shortened um time period with um the number of really critical issues that we all are deeply concerned about and really want to uh, put our attention to I think making sure that we are following all of the the council rules, the state rules, and I I know that you guys know that we also swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And so I want us to be assured that those responsibilities are um, well covered while we work on the the policy issues that everyone has expressed um, deep interest, concern, and, and willingness to get done. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Council President. Are there any further comments from Council members? I'm not seeing anyone in queue, not hearing anyone jump in. Therefore, Council members, we will move to a vote. As noted earlier in the election procedure, the first vote will be taken on the nomination of Council Member Elliot Payne, representative of Ward 1, to the Office of Vice President. The motion will be to approve uh, and uh, elect Council Member Elliot Payne, Council Member from Ward 1, to the Office of Vice President. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wansley Warlaba. Oh, my camera sucks. Sorry. Aye. <laughs> Rainville. Nay. Vita. Nay. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Nay. Goodman. Nay. Jenkins. Nay. Chavez. Aye. Shaktai. Aye. Koski. Nay. Johnson. Nay. Palmasano. Nay. There are five ayes and eight nays. That motion fails. The next motion is on the nomination of Lene Palmasano, council member representing the 13th ward to the office of vice president. So we will take a vote on that motion, which is the motion to elect Council Member Palmasano from the 13th Ward to the Office of Vice President. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Nay. Wansley Warlaba. Nay. Rainville. Aye. Vita. Aye. Ellison. Nay. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Chavez. Nay. Shuktai. Nay. Koski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. There are eight ayes and five nays. That motion carries and Councilmember Palmasano has been elected to the office of vice president. Congratulations to Council President Jenkins, Council Vice President Palmasano, and Madam President. With that, the election has been completed, and I will turn the chair over to you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And um, once again, I really um, am I'm, I'm deeply moved and emotional right now. Um, but thank you to my colleagues for um, this incredible honor uh, as electing me as your um, wow, president of this tremendously august body. Before we, before I, I move deeply into my comments, though, I do want to just um, ask us all and and everyone that is tuned in um online or in the television audience to please take a moment of silence i want to take one minute of silence for a dear dear friend who lost the battle to COVID 19 uh mel reeves uh, a beloved uh, member of our community um, um a journalist who I believe plays a active role in government and in governing and in democracy. But not only a moment of silence for Mel Reeves, but for the hundreds of Minneapolitans, um, the thousands of Minnesotans, and the hundreds of thousands of Americans that have lost their lives to COVID-19 or variants thereof. A moment of silence.
thank you everyone. Um, thank you for acknowledging that this, this pandemic has um, taken a tremendous toll on us all. Um, it's why we're meeting virtually today um, as opposed to in person, uh, but we, we will get through this. Also want to take a moment to, to make a land acknowledgement and acknowledge that here in Minneapolis, we are on the unceded stolen lands occupied by Dakota, Lakota, Ojibwe, Anishinaabe, and Metawakanton Sioux, and, and many other um, um, tribal nations. And also that this nation was built by and continues to exploit stolen labor. This is the context that we must remember as we debate these deep issues that are impacting our communities. Colleagues, friends, family, and neighbors, I am so deeply humbled by your continued support of my leadership of this August body. This body that is reflective of Minneapolis in almost every diverse identifier possible. We represent age diversity, gender balance. In fact, there is a majority of women on this council. Though it is not the first time, there have been many or multiple majority women councils throughout our recent history. But collectively, we represent almost all of the most populous ethnicities in our community, sans our Native American community. And that, my friends, puts the onus on us to ensure that that voice, that perspective is authentically in the room. We have Christian, Muslim, Jewish faiths represented. We have API community, Latinx community, African American community, the Somali community, disabled community, speaking strictly for myself, the LGBTQIA plus community, and even more specifically, black trans women representation, making us a majority people of color city council. We are reflective of the entirety of Minneapolis. The Rainbow Tribe, as poet Nikki Giovanni once wrote about. But that, my friends, is not even the most important diversity. Because we represent a diversity of thought, of ideas and solutions to the most pressing issues of our time. Issues like public safety beyond policing, de developing a rent stabilization policy that is fair and equitable and protects the most vulnerable renters in our community. And our voters said that we must restructure our government. We must continue to make our city more accessible for disabled residents and ensure that there are resources for our homeless and housing insecure neighbors. Our streets must be able to accommodate all modes of transportation, prioritizing pedestrians, mass transit, bikes, and then subsequently cars. In other words, we have a whole lot of work to do. When I was growing up in a very working class family on the west and south sides of Chicago. I never dreamed that I would ascend to this level of leadership and responsibility. And I had a flashback this morning because as we were reciting the, the Pledge of Allegiance, I was reminded that when I was in first grade, my teacher picked me to lead the Pledge of Allegiance and told my mother um, that someday I might be president. 
I'm really not sure what she saw, but but that moment has always stuck with me. I knew when I was four years old that I was different from other little boys. I knew that I was transgender. Even though that language did not exist then. And in an effort toward self-preservation, I remained closeted for as long as I could. And at some point, I could no longer be healthy while hiding the most significant part of myself from myself and others who loved and cared about me. So I came to terms with my authentic self. And to be very clear, the term transgender still was not a part of the American lexicon 30 years ago. There were no Laverne Cox, no Janet Mock, no RuPaul, Drag Race, or Pose back then. Some people say I was a trailblazer, but in reality, I was simply trying to survive. And in fighting for my own survival, I was helping others along the way. These experiences have taught me some very, very valuable lessons. Like when you become comfortable with who you are, others will respect and accept you to the level that you accept yourself. In other words, respect is earned, not given. I learned the value of patience and allowing my family and friends to grow and learn alongside of me. And frankly, some were not willing to come on this journey. And you know what? That's all right too. I learned not to burn bridges because you never know when you will need to cross that way again. And that sometimes the bridges do crumble on their own. And we must work to rebuild them when they do. The greatest lesson I have learned, however, is that love, yes, love can overcome a multitude of challenges. The late Black feminist scholar Bill Hooks opined that the word love is often defined as a noun. Yet, we would all love better if we used it as a verb. Ernesto Che Rivera said, the true revolutionary is guided by great feelings of love. And Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who we will be celebrating his birthday at the beginning of next week, once stated, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. So before I end my remarks with um, a poem called We Will Heal, I just want to take a moment to use this platform to acknowledge and pay tribute to the 49 trans people who lost their lives to violence in 2021. Mostly Black and Latinx women, they are my inspiration and in why I continue to show up in this divided world that we live in. I acknowledge all of those strong shoulders that I stand on that have guided me to this day. I am so grateful for my family, my single mother who always kept a roof over our heads and food on the table, my daughter and my three intelligent, beautiful grandchildren, and all of my extended family, biological and chosen. I wanna thank my partner. I'm so grateful for you. We have been together for these past 11 years and your love continues to lift me in some of my most darkest hours. And, and as the mayor talked about this morning, um, sometimes our families um, 
carry even a bigger share of the burden than we do. And I'm grateful for all of you. All of you who are willing to stand up and try to make Minneapolis a better place to live. Colleagues, as we embark on this two year journey as leaders in this great city, let us remember that we are like runners in a relay race. We have been handed a baton. And our charge is to carry forth the work initiated by our predecessors and leave this city better than when we were elevated to this awesome task. I sincerely look forward to working with all of you and I implore us, yes, us, to lead with dignity, integrity, and love. We will heal. After Nikki Giovanni, we will prevail. We are Minneapolis. We are George Floyd Square. We are still grieving. We are constantly re-traumatized. Can you say Dante right? We will continue to grieve as we build. We will not forget. We are nurturing our hearts. We are George Floyd Square. We are Minneapolis. We are strong enough to shed tears. We are brave enough to change the world and tender enough to spread love. It's the South Side way. We do not understand this tragedy, or do we? We know we did nothing to deserve this tragedy, or did we? Neither did the nine parishioners of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Neither did those black families still living on plantations in places like Warren County, Mississippi. Neither did the mothers of the movement, Valerie Castile, Gwen Carr, Sabrina Fulton, Maria Hamilton, Lucy McBath, Leslie McSpaden, or Geneva Reed Field. And now we add Katie Bryant and Wanda Cooper Jones to that list. At least there was some accountability for the murders of their sons. Dante and Ahmad. No one deserves a tragedy. We are George Floyd Square. We are Minneapolis. We are Black Visions Collective, all in for Minneapolis. Yes, for Minneapolis. Neighbors for more neighbors. Justice for Jamar and Justine. Standing up for racial justice and humanize my hoodie, sprinkled with a little black excellence. We will reimagine, reconcile, and repair the harms of the past. We are stronger than we know, and yet we know we got a lot of work to do. We are skeptical and optimistic, exuberant and pragmatic. We will continue to invest in our youth and the future. Through the fear and the fury, through the joy and the pain, we are Minneapolis. We are George Floyd Square. We will heal. We will heal. We will heal. We are George Floyd Square. We are Minneapolis. Thank you all. And colleagues, I would like to recognize 
uh, our vice president for some brief comments. Council member Palmasano, Council Vice President Palmasano. Thank you, Madam President. First, I'd also just like to set a tone. Uh, we are one city. My interest here is to help provide that glue and our decorum of respect and working together, even when we are in disagreement, will lead us to great places. Our chosen president, Andrea Jenkins, will be that guide. Madam President, I look so forward to working with you together this term and in, in this new way. Thank you for all of these words you just spoke. I didn't think we would have a unanimous vote today on the item of officers, and that's all right. We can still come up with a shared agenda. We can disagree, but it's how we disagree and stay in the conversation that is what is incredibly important to me. I think that um, the officers vote today represents our community. Our community is divided and the election last November, as the president mentioned earlier, clearly showed that. We are 13 different wards and even more different perspectives, but we're one city and we will treat each other with respect and learn to govern together in our one city. We will see each other for who we are and not who pundits want to make us out to be or demonize us to be. We come from different places and different parts of our community, but we are one city. It's okay that every vote that we will take this term won't be unanimous. Frankly, today's votes were just being honest and we still can keep working together. A friend of mine, another friend of mine, a Minneapolis resident that I deeply respect, who has taught about democracy around the world, wrote me yesterday with an incredibly important suggestion. She said, if there's anything you could do that would fill me with joy this next term, it would be to break the rock hard coalitions that form and then persist on the city council as well as in most of politics. It is what is wrong with today's politics. If we talked about everything, we would find worlds of disagreement, this friend and I, because we come from different life views, but together we choose and have always chosen to find those areas of agreement. That should exist in the city council and at the state and at the federal government levels. Retreating to alliances that says we are always in opposition to one another based on a party or using labels, that is harming our country. And I don't want any body of government to operate like a ruling party that gets their way and then cast offs that get nothing. That is fundamentally inequitable. It's un-American and I will fight it. So I challenge us all to create that. I know each of us is more creative than these binary kinds of arguments, these fractures that our society bullies us to create. Let's work on persuading each other. Let's collaborate, let's listen, let's allow each other to change our minds. It is our job. And if we don't, it will be our downfall. So this is how I plan to run this position as vice president. I'm thrilled about the opportunity to work with each and every one of you. To our new members, I am so glad to have gotten to know you and will continue to get to know you as we move forward. I'm also excited to work with you all on making legislative processes better. Together, we can set up a local government and be more accessible to the public, more knowable to the people. I am not in denial about the issues facing Minneapolis or our issues in coming together to govern as one. And I've never shied away from difficulties that we face. Some are systemic, some are situational. We need this healing and we need this togetherness. Thank you for your trust. This is about service and I'll turn it back to you, Madam President. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, I am truly looking forward to 
um, what this term is going to bring on behalf of our residents at the city of Minneapolis. And with that, colleagues, we will now return. We will now turn to the remainder of our agenda. Uh, the clerk's office has prepared a, a packet that includes the various resolutions and motions that are associated with each agenda item, which you should have. There are a total of five items under new business, which are numbered in your packets as NB1 through NB5. Then there are three ordinances, uh, ordinance introductions listed as IRC1 through 3. Uh, I will take a moment to recognize uh, Council Member Goodman and then subsequently Council Member Payne. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I was just interested in moving item to the appointment of the city clerk, but I'm certainly happy to wait until you explain that if you would prefer. Um, well, we do. We, so we have a motion on the floor um, to um, appoint the city clerk, uh, Mr. Casey Carl, and I will, um, well, before I ask for a second, uh, I am going to um, ask Council Member Payne, are your comments related to the nomination or? Um, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I had a question for uh, Casey Carl about rescinding my substitute proposal uh, on item one of new business. Okay, I think we can, well, go ahead, Mr. Clerk, please. I'm sorry, Madam President, as you well know, uh, the next item of business is actually item number two under election. This is a uh, process of appointing a city clerk. Then it will move forward to new business item number one, which is uh, the first item is related to the standing uh, subcommittees or committees and standing committees. And to uh, that question, I think we should defer until that question is before the body. Right now, before the body is the appointment of city clerk. And we do have a motion. Am I correct? We need, or we, we need Council a Member motion. Goodman, would you please restate your motion? Thank you, Madam President. Um, after having the good fortune to be able to work with Mr. Carl for over 10 years, I feel like we are some of the luckiest council members in the country to have such an incredible clerk. And I am proud to move his appointment under item number two, uh, approving the appointment of the city clerk. Second. Madam thank President. You both. We, thank you both. We now have a um, proper motion and second. And um, I was on mute, so thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, but colleagues, just for clarification, the city charter gives the council sole power to appoint the city clerk. The clerk is the secretary of the municipal corporation, is responsible for administering elections and managing corporate information assets, and also serves as the body's clerk and parliamentarian. Um, and, um, you know, I, I just want to acknowledge, um, again, on this council, um, the extraordinary efforts that uh, Mr. Carl as the clerk and the clerk's team uh, in managing our elections process, managing all the data and information of the fast moving actions of our councils that sometimes don't always um, coincide with the um, the wishes and desires of the clerk, but we we managed to get it done. And I just wanted to take a moment to recognize and, and thank uh, you, Mr. Clerk, and your staff for those incredible efforts. Um, and I will recognize um, Council Member Ellison.
my apologies. Uh, let's start with Council Member Johnson and then Rainville and then Ellison. Thank you, Madam President. And here, here on your words uh, for the clerk and the clerk's team. I mean, they uh, keep the trains running truly at City Hall and literally facilitate democracy and our transparency for the public and make this job possible. And I know they work long hours, many weekends, and it is a fantastic department. Uh, uh, in no small part because of the leader at the top of that department, Casey Carl, who is just a pleasure to work with and offers fantastic advice and makes the whole show happen, the whole thing happen. And Casey, we're truly lucky to have you uh, and fortunate to have you in the city of Minneapolis because you don't just serve this council, you serve the people of Minneapolis, the 430,000 plus residents. And it is truly a service. And I, I, I think it, for us, we are very lucky to be able to really understand and appreciate um, just how much of a service that is. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work you do and your team does. Uh, it is a Herculean effort and it is greatly, greatly appreciated and makes a tremendous difference. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Rainville. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I uh, am pleased to vote in favor for um, Mr. Uh, Casey Carl, and I just want to say thank you, Carl, uh, Mr. Carl, uh, to you and all your staff for the orientation and the training that you provided the new council members. Uh, you did a great job and you have really prepared me for this job, for this uh, opportunity to serve the people of Minneapolis. And I want to thank you publicly. Council Member Ellison. <clears throat> thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to commend the uh, clerk's office for all of the tremendous work that they do, um, not only in um, helping the enterprise uh, along and facilitating that, but also uh, in uh, running our elections in particular. Uh, not only do the clerks run the elections, but I also want to highlight that in this pandemic, the early vote center has also been at times used as a place for people to get vaccinated or a place for people to get tested. And so we really see the clerks going above and beyond. And I don't think that um, Mr. Carl intended to be a um, public health official when he first entered into this role, um, but in the many ways that this moment is calling on us to do things outside of our purview, uh, certainly Mr. Carl's team um, has has stepped up and uh, it, 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 it's a, it is a, um, uh, tremendous talent to know how to put together such a good team. So um, I'm happy to uh, be in support of this motion. Thank you, Councilmember Ellison. And um, yeah, we have a pretty big election cycle coming up this year. So um, glad to know that we have an amazing team to to help guide us through. And um, as Councilmember Johnson noted continuously uh, upholding democracy in our community. Um, Council Member Payne and then Council Member Vitao. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to say that uh, you know, as somebody who's worked at the staff level in City Hall, I know all too well how complex this organization can be. And I just want to say that as now an elected official, it is so clear how much hard work goes into making this city function and be as transparent as possible. And I celebrate uh, Casey Carl and all of his efforts and even in getting prepared for this meeting, just the level of dedication and passion and commitment that uh, Mr. Carl shares for this work and for the city of Minneapolis is just really inspiring. So I'm happy to support this nomination. Councilmember Vitao. 
Thank you, President Jenkins. I am so excited to um, support the nomination of Mr. Casey Carl. This experience has been great because we're being prepared for it. I had not factored in that we would have um, a month of orientation and I am so grateful for it. I am so excited about uh, the days to come because I feel prepared. I feel like I have a team of people there to support me, to guide me, to mentor and help. So thank you to Mr. Carl, uh, Carl and the clerk's office. They do a wonderful job and they do it, you know, in, in such a loving way. They they smile, they, they're happy to do the work. There's not a lot of um, complaining, at least not in your face. Um, so thank you all so much for the wonderful work you've done so far, and I'm super excited about working together. Thank you, Madam President. Next, we have um, Council Member Wansley Reloba. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to say um, I'm also excited to support uh, Casey for uh, clerk again. Um, I think I'm the only one here who has the distinct privilege of uh, being elected three times to my position um, of city council. And I am so just at all at how Casey was able to pull together the elections team to create such a fair and democratic and just smooth process. And that's just been um, extended throughout um, all of our council, you know, activities such as orientation and even the trainings that we all have the uh, privilege of participating in this week. Um, so looking forward to supporting Casey and just want to say thank you for all that you've done th thus far. Great, thank you, Council Member. And it doesn't appear that we have anyone else in queue and we have a motion and proper second. So I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wansley Warlebaugh. Aye. Rainville. Aye. Vita. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Shaktai. Aye. Koski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Vice President Paul Masano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes and no nays. That uh, motion carries and Mr. Carl has been appointed city clerk. Congratulations to you, Mr. Carl. Uh, it truly is a pleasure um, uh, serving and working alongside of you and um, look forward to, to, to great things to come. Colleagues, the first item of new business is a resolution establishing our operating structure for the coming term. This is item NB1 in your packets. Uh, under council rules, the president uh, appoints council committees subject to the vote of the body. Therefore, I am introducing a resolution that creates a system of standing and special committees to support our work as reflected in your packets. Um, the resolution establishes each standing and special committee the its leaders and memberships of each committee, the quorum, the dates of regular meetings for each and the summary of the subject matter jurisdiction for each as well. Um, and I will ask the technical team to display that chart that was prepared to depict this structure so that we can have uh, a common reference, which I think will be helpful um, than just the draft resolution. And I do wanna just take a moment to thank uh, Council Vice President um, Palmasano for um, you know, really connecting with all of the council members to really try to understand where people's uh, interests, where people's um, experience um, and um, energy lies to try to help come up with this, um, this 
resolution. So thank you, Council Member uh, Palmasano. Can we see the structure? Yep. And um, as you can see, I'm proposing to retain this basic, the basic standing committee system that we adapted um, as a as a means to really respond to the COVID crisis in our community and that we're still dealing with. Uh, I think the system worked really well, and I believe that um, it will be a solid foundation for the expanded work of this body with addition to special committees and subcommittees and working groups to address um, some of the issues that we have been um, very, very deeply concerned about. For the record, I will state that the standing committees I have pro uh, uh, proposing includes the following. So a business inspections, housing and zoning committee or biz led by council member Goodman as the chair with council member Osman as vice chair. Uh, the members of this committee would include council member Rainville, Ellison, Chavez and Chuck Tai. This committee will provide oversight for business licensing, permitting and regulatory functions, housing and housing policy, land use and zoning policy, and related administrative and quasi judicial functions and community and economic development matters. A public health and safety committee led by council member Vitao as the chair with Council Member Payne as the vice chair. Members will include Council Members Wansley, Warlabaugh, Rainville, Ellison, and Palmasano. This committee provides oversight for public health and human service and human and social service programs, including civil rights, immigration and refugee affairs, environment and sustainability initiatives and programming and community engagement and will also be the committee that addresses public safety functions and public services, including but not limited to emergency management, response, fire and emergency medical and police and safety beyond policing initiatives and programming. A public works and infrastructure committee led by council member Johnson as its chair with Council Member Kosky as the vice chair. Members will include uh, Council Member Payne, Wansley Warlaba, Vitao, and Chugtai. This committee provides oversight for all aspects of our community's infrastructure grid to the broadest sense, including public works, the built environment, and those functions and services upon which the city builds, develops, and operates, et cetera as well as broadband capacity and information technology as a part of that grid. We also have a standing policy and government oversight committee, which will be led by Council Member Ellison as its chair. Um, with Council Member Wansley Warlaba as the vice chair. Members will include Council Members Vitao, Chavez, Kosky, and Johnson. This committee provides oversight for all aspects of general government operations, not otherwise assigned to a separate standing committee, which is largely focused on enterprise management functions and includes elections. Finally, the committee of the whole, which as stated in our rules, is chaired by the vice president, council member Palmasano. Council member Chavez will be the vice chair of this committee. All committee members are part of the Committee of the Whole. This body primarily acts as a board of review for all reports and recommendations by the standing and special committees prior to any formal action by the full council. The Committee of the Whole will also have two important subcommittees as a part of its structure, which includes the Race and Equity Subcommittee that I will chair and the government structure subcommittee that Vice President Palmasano will chair. Both subcommittees will meet at the call of the respective chairs to address business as necessary. 
For my newer colleagues, I would like to just explain that the purpose of standing committees is to review, to refine and recommend actions for consideration and action by the full council. I believe that focusing on smaller number of standing committees, we can add in the flexibility in our schedules for other forms to allow council to address new and emerging and future focused items and so that we can incorporate more time to work um, in our wards and to interact with our constituents. This structure will allow us to, to pursue further opportunities that represent the priorities and needs of the community through service on external agencies and organizations. And I believe that it presents us all with a win-win opportunity. It places, um, uh, significant responsibility, um, I believe, equally throughout the organization and that and allows everybody to contribute to these conversations moving forward. In addition to these standing committees, I'm proposing two special committees to have very focused jurisdiction. These are the budget committee, which would be led by Council Member Koski and the Intergovernmental Relations Committee led by Council Member Johnson. These special committees include all council members in their membership so that all council members have an equal voice in the issues that are addressed by these special communities. And finally, in addition to the standing and special committees, I'm also performing, proposing that we form working groups to address some of the issues. Um, I'm sorry, colleagues, to address some of the issues um, that are uh, more significant, long range and important policy issues before us. Those include rent stabilization and public safety uh, reform. And so these working groups would include council members, the mayor, members of the public, key representatives from operating departments in the city's administration so that we can come together, collaborate on developing policy proposals and um, and then introduce that work through our standing committee systems. The purpose of these working groups is to give us as city elected leaders the space to do the heavy lifting involving community uh, members together to create these important policy proposals that are tailored to meet the unique needs of our communities and constituents. And that will take lots of work energy resources that are in addition to and outside of our regular two week committee uh, cycles. So we need an all hands on deck approach to these critical issues. And I think these working groups will really help to provide that kind of forum. Um, I do wanna just ask for patience as we don't have the fullest details for those working groups developed at this time, but I wanna get your approval on the general concept and then bring back more formal proposal at the next cycle for your consideration. With all of that as explanation, I'd like us to focus first on the proposed operating structure that includes the standing and special committees as I've described them and reflected on the chart that is being displayed. This proposal is identified as NB1 in your packets. Are there any questions or discussions on this resolution? Councilmember Palmasano. I just wanted to make that motion. So moved. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Second. We have a uh, proper motion and second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Member uh, Wansley Ward Laba. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I'm sorry if I missed this component. Um, did you share uh, what criteria will go into selecting um, that you know diverse set of constituent and stakeholder groups for the rent control uh, work group? Thank you for that question, uh, Council Member. I did not share and. Um, 
we will be developing the details of that work um, and you're certainly invited to have input in in the development of that but no i i did not share how how that is going to completely play out and so what we would be doing today is authorizing um the creation of that structure does that help yes thank you for that clarity yes uh council member chuck time I'm so sorry um, to derail this, but uh, just a quick question um, on a, as a follow up to um, Council Member Wansley Warlabas question. I'm just wondering what the um, what the timeline will be to figure out the details of the work groups, and I'm wondering, um, like, will we approve the criteria that we create uh, for you know, members of that, of those, of those work groups, the timeline on which they have to, you know, meet and get their work done, will that be approved by council? Will that go through committee and make its way? I'm just trying to make sure I, I understand exactly what we are voting to approve and what the next steps will be. Sure. So we're voting to approve a general concept of working groups to address these issues. Um, we will then, in the next two week cycle, um, develop what that process would be, what the criteria uh, would be, and and hopefully we can figure out what the membership will be. And then um, we, yeah, that would be our structure and we would um, vote on that um, at our next committee meeting. And I would invite, um, so I mean, if that helps, we can move on to the next uh, council member, or did you have more questions, council member? Just can I, if it's okay, I'm happy to get, go back and sure. see if that's easy. Okay. Um, I, I my just follow, quick follow up on that is, uh, I know you said in the next two week cycle, we will figure out what the logistics look like. Will we, will that happen through, committee will that happen but will you be doing that in consultation with us and with a, a lot of partners i'm sure but who is moving this in the next two week period will we it, you know like is it going to go through biz and then cow and then council or no we will we will have these conversations um about the working group as a ad hoc i will be conferring with um staff with council members um, to, to try to fill in the details of, of this proposal. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're very welcome. Uh, council Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. And I wanna piggyback off those comments and just say I appreciate uh, this being brought up in this meeting and the questions that were asked around this. And I appreciate the urgency around this issue and. Uh, in diving in and developing out the details and my personal hope that we uh, have something that can be on the ballot uh, this fall. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other comments, discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. No, uh, abstain. No, Council member Wansley Warlaba. Abstain. Council member Rainville. Aye. Council member Vita. Aye. Council member Ellison. Abstain. Council member Osman. Aye. Council member Goodman. Aye. Council member Chavez. Abstain. Council member Shugtai. Abstain. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are eight ayes, no nays, and five abstentions.
So that item carries. Um, and the resolution establishing standing and special committees for the council for the coming term has been adopted. Uh, before we proceed, I would just want to confirm that the consensus of this body is for uh, for me is in consultation with um, yourselves and other staff uh, to develop a more formal outline for the proposed working groups and then submit that to your consideration for in the next cycle. If there are no objections, um, I will assume that I have your approval to move that work forward. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. And no objections on this. I think it's just something uh, for the public. And obviously, I know you would do this, and I know that you're aware of this, but just um, that I know it won't be with a quorum of committee uh, members that you have this discussion and that you're just going to talk with um, some key council members. And so I appreciate the leadership of um, colleagues that I'm sure will confer with you on those specific details. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, colleagues. So the next um, item is approval of the calendar for our regular meetings of the City Council and our committees for the 2022-23 term. This is noted as item NB2 in your packets. This reflects the operating structure that we just approved in the prior action. May I have a motion to adopt the calendar? So moved, Madam President. Second. We have a proper motion and second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Upstand. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Upstand. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Abstain. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Abstain. Council Member Shugtai. Abstain. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are eight ayes, zero nays, and five abstentions. That motion carries. The calendar of regular meetings has been adopted, and we will further direct the clerk to publish and post the calendar as public notice of all of these regular meetings as required under the Minnesota Open Meeting Law, codified under Minnesota Statutes, Sections 13D.04, Subdivision 1. Our next item is resolution affirming and ratifying the council's rules of order for the coming term. This is noted as item NB3 in your packets. May I have a motion to adopt that resolution? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Uh, we have a proper motion and second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Okay, that worked. Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That motion carries the rep. Um, and the rules have been affirmed and ratified for the coming term of the City Council. 
We will further direct the clerk to update as appropriate and publish and post the rules and to provide copies to all council members. Uh, colleagues, the next item is the resolution which establishes a plan of succession for the offices of mayor and council president as required under the city charter, council rules, and the relevant provisions of our municipal code. This is listed as item NB4 in your packet. I have a motion to adopt that resolution. So moved, Madam President. Second. We have a proper motion and second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Shuntai. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That motion carries and the resolution establishing a succession plan has been adopted. We will further direct the clerk to file that plan with the relevant offices for continuity of government and emergency operational functions. The next item is the appointment of council members to the audit committee. This is listed as NB5 in your packets, and I will ask the clerk to provide a brief explanation about this proposal since it involves a temporary matter pending further action on the voter approved government structure amendment to the city charter. Mr. Clerk, would you please provide that explanation? Thank you, Madam President. As this body is aware, and the council president just noted, voters did approve a change in the government structure uh, by charter amendment in November, transitioning to an executive mayor and legislative council form of government. As part of that amendment, the council is required to establish and appoint an independent audit committee. The composition of that audit committee is dictated under the charter amendment. Prior to that charter amendment, however, the council had previously established an independent audit committee by ordinance, which is codified under section 17.90 of the municipal code. There are some conflicts between the new charter provisions and the existing code. Therefore, this body will need to amend the code provisions to bring us into compliance with the new charter mandate with respect to that audit committee. While that work on a new ordinance proceeds, the existing audit committee continues in force to provide continuity in the city's audit function and its oversight of the internal auditor. So this is a necessary temporary action to ensure continuity of government operations. Under the existing code provisions, the council president appoints two members to the audit committee and designates the committee's chair. The third council member serves ex officio as the chair of the uh, Council's Ways and Means Committee, which under the new approved structure would be the Budget Committee, the body assigned responsibility for budgetary and financial management functions. The president has indicated she plans to appoint council members Palmasano and Payne as the two members of the body to the Audit Committee and designated council member Palmasano as chair of the Audit Committee. As Budget Committee chair, council member Koski serves automatically in the third council seat on the committee. I estimate that staff will be prepared to bring forward a draft ordinance within the first quarter of this year for consideration and final action of the council. That ordinance would then provide for the alignment between the new charter provisions and the existing code in order to reconstitute the audit committee as well as the internal structure, operation, and functions of the new Office of City Auditor. That it completes my explanation, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, and um, are there any questions um, for the clerk? Seeing none, um, I, I'm presenting my appointments to the audit committee as reflected in items NB5 in your pockets. 
This is not an action of the full body, but appointments made by the council president. So I'll congratulate those members who have been appointed to the audit committee. Uh, encourage the audit committee to move quickly on recommendations on how to restructure that independent body to align with the new government structure that has been approved by the voters. And that completes our um, action on items listed under new business on the agenda. The next step that the next um, item that we will take up is introduction of referral calendar. Here are three items before us listed in our packets as IRC 1, 2, and 3. Um, these are routine ordinance introductions to be referred to proper committees. These actions are included in every organizational meeting as a means of expediting the noticing and referral of these routine matters coming um, during the coming term. This action essentially opens these chapters to routine reoccurring actions. I would like to take one vote on all three of these introductions. Therefore, I will first ask, are there any questions from any members on any of the three referrals? Are there any questions? With that, I will call for a vote on all three referrals at the same time. We have listed the chair of the respected standing committees as the authors of each of these uh, separate motions as a courtesy, which is um, a tradition, and the clerk will call the roll on that motion. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlawa. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Aye. Councilmember Vitam. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Chaktai. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Thank you. And um, that item carries. Colleagues, that completes the organizational business for our meeting. We do have addendum items that were added as amendments to the agenda noted by the clerk. These items are submitted by the mayor and pertain to his nomination of a new public works director and to some emergency regulations tied to the city's existing public health emergency. I'll ask the clerk to present each of these um, items for us and to provide the context of the action that is requested uh, of the council. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. As you said, Mayor Fry has taken several actions with respect to the ongoing local public health emergency, which was first declared in March of 2020. This past week, the mayor issued three new emergency regulations and also requested that the council take action to extend the date of the existing emergency, which is set to expire February 13th. Under applicable state and local laws and policies, the mayor may proclaim regulations under a declared emergency, which are in force for a period of not to exceed 30 days. The council, however, may extend and continue those emergency regulations by formal action. Thus, it has been our continuing practice throughout this emergency period to bring forward all of the mayor's emergency regulations that are proclaimed and to have those ratified and extended by formal action of the city council so that each of those emergency regulations continue to apply throughout the duration of the declared emergency period. Staff have therefore prepared a draft resolution for council that would achieve this objective. That resolution numbered 2022R-004, uh, which was circulated earlier this morning, is proposed to extend the period of the city's local public health emergency. It also ratifies and extends the three emergency regulations that were issued uh, just last week by Mayor Fry. For the record, I will summarize those three regulations. Regulation number one reestablishes a mandate 
for masks or facial coverings to be worn in all indoor public locations. This regulation became effective January 6th. Regulation number two enables local businesses within set parameters to temporarily expand their premises for operations. This regulation became effective January 7th and is to continue for a period of not to exceed 45 days after the declared emergency period does expire. And finally, regulation number three, which updates the city's existing vaccination and testing policy and which became effective on January 7th. Madam President, that completes my summary of those items tied to the city's existing local public health emergency and emergency regulations. I'm happy to respond to questions. Otherwise, it would be in order at this time for the council to take action on the draft resolution prepared by staff. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Are there any questions? Are there any questions, uh, Councilman Rapain? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a question for item number two. Uh, would this be the formal appointment and would that happen in lieu of any public hearings or uh, opportunities to have deeper conversations or is it just this accepting the nomination? Um, this is actually um, taking the mayor's nomination and forwarding it to the appropriate committee for a public hearing. And that committee would be the Public Works Committee, um, chaired by um, Councilmember Johnson, and which you are a member of. So, yes, we will have a public hearing and a very public process on the nomination of number two. But we are um, talking about the emergency uh, declaration at this particular moment. Uh, are there any questions about the mayor's emergency declarations at all? Uh, no, Madam President, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I hope that answers your question. I think I had the appropriate response, but Mr. Clerk, if that is, if there's more, please uh, add. That was exactly correct. Thank you. And so um, are we, so then we're prepared to voting. vote on a motion mm -hmm, to approve oh. the resolution that is related only to item number one on your screens, the COVID emergency declaration and regulations. Thank you. Um, so I called for questions on uh, addendum number one. I will ask one more time. Are there any, is there any discussion on item number one? Say no, no, ask the clerk to call the roll. Council member Payne. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlava. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. Uh, that item carries. And then the next is item addendum number two is a nomination of the Public Works Director. Referring to Mayor's nomination. Um, to um, the appropriate committee uh, for a public hearing. Is there any questions? Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Wansley Warlaba. Aye. Councilmember Rainbow. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Shuktai. Aye. Councilmember Koski. 
Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 13 ayes. And that item carries and will be forwarded to the appropriate committee for the um, setting of a public hearing to um, address that appointment. And the final item on our agenda is announcements. And um, before I just, you know, end with my concluding comments, are there any general announcements from our council members? And just for clarity, announcements can be events that are occurring in your um, community, uh, in your ward, in the city generally, um, other items of import that you think are important for the residents of Minneapolis to be aware of. For example, um, this coming Monday, we don't have any more public meetings, but will be the birth date of um, one of the most influential Americans um, in my estimation ever, uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, and though I don't think we need an announcement on that, but I, I do think it's important to acknowledge that on this body. Council member, uh, Wansley Warbla. Warloba. <laughs> Thank you for that, Madam President. Yes. Um, I just would like to say, you know, in light of this meeting, I'm really looking forward to collaborating with everyone on a number of issues that's facing our city. I think one of the key and most immediate ones is actually tomorrow um, in Council Member Ellison's uh, ward. Um, there's going to be an eviction um, happening there um, amongst our unsheltered residents. Um, I would love if many of my council members could join, um, you know, that eviction process and actually actually encouraging, you know, the mayor's office and all city leaders to delay until we actually have a permanent plan of housing uh, for every single one of those uh, residents of that encampment. And that includes for the other two um, encampments that's going to be evicted over the coming weeks. Um, this is an opportunity, as we all talked about in over the past weeks of engaging the public and really learning what um, our constituents um, key issues are, and I think one of the best ways is to meet them where they are. Um, so that eviction is set to go at six um, in the morning at the near north encampment. Um, I'm more than willing to share uh, additional information via email with every single one of you, and we'd really love to, um, you know, make sure that we're protecting residents there. I, I was there last year, and it was a violent encampment. Um, eviction, and I don't think any of us would like to see that happen um, to our constituents and to the residents of this city. So just wanted to extend that invitation to every single one of you. Thank you, Council Member. Um, are there any additional announcements? Um, seeing none, that uh, completes all the items on our agenda for our organizational meeting. Before we adjourn, I do want to just repeat my deepest, most sincerest and humblest appreciation to each and every one of you for what is truly an honor. Um, you, you, um, you fulfilled my first grade teacher's uh, fantasy of me becoming president. Um, and um, I know that my mother is is very, very proud as well. So so thank you all. I just want to reiterate how excited I am to get started with you on the work that we will um, no doubt accomplish together. We have so much to do and I'm confident that working together, we will achieve great things. So let collaboration, cooperation, community be our constant guides in this work. Together in our partnership with the mayor and the city administration, I know that we can be successful. Um, finally, on behalf of the entire city council, I really wanna just um, reiterate what I think has already been shared, and that is our deepest uh, thanks, appreciation, and gratitude 
to all the staff that has helped to plan to organize this meeting, uh, as well as the entire inauguration ceremony today, as well as last Monday. And I, I know if I tried to go down the list and name everybody, I would uh, really miss all of the people who have contributed. But just know that um, we know and we recognize all of you who have contributed mightily, including our own staffs um, that have stepped up and helped to serve as guides, as um, as just organizers. I mean, I was reading my emails last night and the team from War 9 put together an amazing um, visual for how to attend the inauguration today. And so it's things like that 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 really um, show the, the collaborative spirit that this council um, exhibits and um, the, the efforts of the employees and the staff at the city of Minneapolis. So we just want to especially shout out the mayor's office, the clerk's office and, and, and that team, as well as our incredible teams from the communications, finance and property services, information technology, the city coordinator's office, and everyone who came together to make um, this day special, not only for us as city council members, but for our families who have traveled um, near and far to, to be with us, to celebrate, to encourage us, to support us. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, colleagues, we have completed all of our business for today. It has been quite a long day. And I will note for the public that the first cycle of our regular meetings begins on Tuesday, January 18th. And the first regular meeting of the full city council is set for Thursday, January 27th at 9.30 a.m. I will see you all there, um, shiny and, and ready to, to move our city forward um, in this uh, next iteration of the Minneapolis City Council. Without injection, I will adjourn this organizational meeting and I uh, hope that everyone has a really amazing week. And with that, colleagues, we are adjourned.